this one, I think it should be a good session because it's a very practical session. You're going to get an insight into my life um, around nutrition and systems and solutions that I use um, and habits. So uh, please bear with some of the home pho photography. Uh, some of it's fantastic, some of it's not, uh, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of this session. So at any time, if you want to ask any questions, this one's a very relaxed one, either unmute and ask the question or pop it in the chat and we can go through it at the end. So we're going to have a look at just some basics, um, setting up the environment and what does your environment actually entail. And then we'll talk about some systems or habits or rituals that you may want to consider and then some Q&A. And I think I've, I've shown this quote before, but I really love it because I think so many people get just, especially this time of year, whether it's, you know, peak of summer or peak or sorry, coming into summer or coming into winter, people will have these lofty goals, but they don't have any way of achieving their goals. I think this really sums up, you know, certainly our approach at Fuel In and certainly what we've seen with the athletes and human beings who do utilize systems and certainly utilize the system of Fuel In to actually achieve what they're setting out to achieve. This is a quote from James Clear. So the environment, what does the environment mean? Well, for me, I think when we talk about nutrition, it's all about the kitchen. So these are actual photos. So there's no Photoshopping. There's nothing like that going in. You can see in the top left, there's obviously some breast milk in there for our youngest. Um, but yeah, we'll just go through it and just talk through some of the, you know, the key things that I think you've got to look at in your kitchen. So from the fridge, obviously, you know, this is where you're going to have a lot of your, your staples. And if you don't have those protein staples, and this is something I hear from a lot of athletes, they struggle to hit their protein intake. Well, if you don't have those protein staples either in the fridge or in the freezer, then you're not going to be able to achieve it, okay? So in the fridge, you've got your protein staples, obviously fruit and vegetables, although I can't spell, and certainly perishables. And then things like your luxury, so dark chocolate, if that's your little guilty pleasure, certainly um, it is for me. And then you may even, you might even notice there, I've got zero, Coke zero. Now, a lot of people may say, geez, he's a nutritionist is drinking Coke Zero. Isn't that bad? Well, if you actually look at the data, and I know the WHO put out this thing saying that it's potentially cancerous, but you know the dosages that have been used either in vitro or in mice models is a dosage which equates to around, I believe, when I've last read it, is around 17 or 18 cans per day. So for me, if my vice is going to be having a sweet drink, yes, um, these drinks may be considered not the best form of health. However, for me, I'd rather drink this than probably a full fat can of Coke and just avoid that massive hit of sugar at this point in time. If you look at something like I've got non-alcoholic beers there, again, there's non-alcoholic beers and there's beers. Again, if you're coming into this period, either coming into summer in the lower, in the, in the Southern hemisphere, or you're coming into the Northern hemisphere into winter, Certainly controlling alcohol intake is going to be important if one of your goals is body composition and controlling that. So non-alcoholic beers, they're, they're very good in terms of flavor now, in terms of total calories, very low, but provide you with that satiation or at least that feeling that you can enjoy a cold beer after a hard day's work. And I think that's fine. Obviously, I do have real beers in the fridge. A real beer, one beer, two beers is not going to destroy your entire dietary intake okay obviously it still needs to be factored in in terms of total calories and certainly you know drinking in excess post exercise or pre exercise is not going to be recommended from an adaptation standpoint but certainly if it is something that can be built into your dietary intake and you account for that in terms of total calories then certainly if that is the worst thing that you're doing having one beer whether it be a non alcoholic or another beer then certainly it can be part of your your environment other things you might notice there um, have fish oils, two types of fish oils in the top left. Um, I tend to keep fish oils in the fridge just because it stops them from going rancid. There is a liquid fish oil, which I prefer just because it's a small amount, but fairly potent, whereas my partner prefers capsules. Again, for you, whichever type of you know fish oil you have, but it's certainly a mainstay in our fridge. Um, other things that you see there that may be of interest, something like the low carb, high protein, pizza base and i'm going to talk about that and how we utilize that um, on a regular but on a weekly basis 
and then other items such as kimchi you can see in that uh, second shelf up on the far left and then my partner does drink collagen um, i consume collagen just in a simple powder but she prefers that and that's certainly being consumed more from an aesthetic standpoint from a skin perspective than anything else you can also see that we've got you know things lined up at the top is things like supplements and easily perishables. I have obviously my Vegemite, which I'm very fond of. And then moving down sort of more into the proteins and that's how I order it. There's a slow grown chicken there. There's some salmon, there's chicken thighs, all packaged up, ready to go. And of course, eggs. Underneath that is some leftovers, um, which I'm a big fan of, and then fresh berries. And then underneath, we just position our, our drinks along that way. If we step into the pantry, now again, I have some order in this. It's not as uh, probably anal as some people are in terms of labeling, but certainly we have things positioned in boxes in containers so that they're easily available and they're easily stored. So at the top, um, mainly things around the overnight oats, which I've unfortunately cut off, but the jar on the far left is cinnamon, then there's cacao nibs, there's chia seeds, uh, there's almonds, there's cashews. Um, in the second layer, you can see I have Clear containers, airtight containers, which is important from a weevil's perspective, but white rice, brown rice. It's all available if I need it. Some baking goods. So there's uh, obviously brown sugar. There's a stevia type sugar, which is low, um, low in actual sugar and carbohydrates. And then we have white flour, brown flour, and other types of flours. And then underneath that, as you can see, again, far right, everything is sto stored there in terms of my fish consumption. So canned fish is readily available. These are your non-perishables that you can fall back on if the fridge is unavailable, if you don't have the proteins in there. So things like small cans of tuna, uh, fillets of mackerel in tomato sauce, anchovies in olive oil or spring. In the middle, you'll see uh, things like baked beans. I'm a big fan of beans. Uh, whether you consume baked beans or cans of black beans, kidney beans, um, also chickpeas or garbanzo, and you should also have them in the dried format. So again, as a fallback, and they're probably better in the dried format if you can be bothered, um, you know, cooking them to how they should be cooked, but certainly having a, a selection of legumes in your pantry, which is going to give you an option for a high, a slightly uh, higher protein carbohydrate source, and certainly advantageous when you, when you need to get some of those uh, variety into your diet, which is certainly going to be good for the gut microbiome from a bean perspective, but certainly from satiation and also from a total caloric standpoint. Um, then we go into the freezer and what you notice here, again, it's probably not that organized, but it's organized chaos for me uh, and my partner. So we will have uh, a lot of single serve options and double serve options pre-bagged or packaged in Tupperware containers. And these are often just leftovers that, uh, you know, from the meal before, and then we have them in reserve. So again, it's always like use the fridge first, fall back into the pantry. And if at last resort, you need to use the freezer or defrost, then that works really well. And that tends to be how we, how we certainly organize our environment in terms of the kitchen. So anyone have any questions about that, any comments, um, you know, how they might do it in their kitchen or how they use uh, their fridge, their pantry or freezer. Cool, we'll move on. So being prepared. So then we move into things that also, you know, again, what you start to see is a level of organization. So um, the photo on the left is my supplements drawer. Uh, so this is where uh, certainly from a carbohydrate perspective, there is a lot of carb products in there. Um, you will notice that I have a bag of maltodextrin. I have a bag of fructose, very cheap products, um, certainly not products that I would be using for races, but I often will use just a cheap maltodextrin if I need, say, 50 or 60 grams of carbohydrates in liquid form uh, on the bike, and I don't want to use, say, a more expensive product. Fructose, bag of fructose, again, food grade. It's not tested for bad substances, but it is a food grade product. So no different from buying Gatorade in my opinion, but certainly if you are an athlete who's concerned about testing, then you should shy away from these and actually stick with products that have been tested for banned products. Um, I played around with maltodextrin and fructose making my own gels. It is a lot harder than what you think, um, but 
it can be done and it, it works pretty well for those moments where you don't have an ample supply of your gels of choice. As you can see, I tend to use precision hydration. So I have them lined up again, caffeinated, non-caffeinated, and also choose. And then there's a jar of caffeine, uh, no dose there, 200 milligrams. Then moves it into organized around, um, you know, electrolytes and then things like collagen, if you are taking supplements with that. But the point of this is that it's organized. It's readily available. There's plenty of them and I'm able to grab them at the drop of a hat. And as we move into, uh, you know, the level below the pantry where I took all the shelf, this is where, as you can see, I use a product called True Protein, but I have multiple flavors of the same product. So it's not about having multiple supplements. It's about having supplements that work and having multiples of those so that you've got either multiple flavors and you've got multiple stocks so that you're not actually running out. Um, so, in, and I'll talk about protein hacks in a bit, but the advantage of having multiple flavors of a particular supplement, and in this case, a WPI-90, which is a whey protein isolate, is that it allows me to have a similar food type for breakfast or as a snack, but it feels like a completely different meal because I have here in the option of coconut, vanilla, banana and honey, or mocha coffee. And so it gives me the sensation or at least the feeling that I'm eating a different product just because of the different flavor, even though the routine and the habit is the same with those types of um, snacks or meals that I'm formulating. And then finally, everyone should have a fruit bowl. As you can see, the older bananas at the top have already been labeled with banana bread and I'm told not to touch. So they're grouped together. So we tend to use older bananas um, and allow those to obviously get riper and riper so we can make fresh home made banana bread, which is always nice to have as a quick snack, but certainly a selection of seasonal fruits. Uh, for us, you know, we've got apples, mangoes, kiwi fruits, certainly having some of the root vegetables and that depends on how big your fruit bowl is, but having a fruit bowl available and having fruit available for you is in my opinion, an absolute must either on your desk or on your countertop so that you can quickly grab a piece of fruit instead of reaching for something that may be not as good or nutritious. So I called this shopping, I initially had it called shopping essentials, and then I changed it to shopping potentials because I'm not going to tell you exactly what you need. This is pretty much what we have in our cupboards at all times or in our fridge or in our freezer. So happy to share this at another point in time. And it is built off a list that we already have um, accessible to the fuel in athletes. But certainly, look, I'm an omnivore. I will eat uh, choices, choice cuts of meat. Uh, from animals and whether that is steak, lamb, pork, or cow, cow, pig, or sheep. Um, certainly chicken and poultry and fish is a mainstay on our menu. And we tend to divide that up throughout the week. A lot of these products, obviously you don't have to buy all at once because that could be very expensive. But the point here is that from the left, you know, we're looking at fridge and freezer and certainly having those products well stocked. Now they're going to be the perishables. They're probably the things that you end up replacing on a weekly basis. As we move into the middle, you're not necessarily going to be replacing all of these things on a weekly basis. Certainly things like your bread, whole wheat bread, if you want to have white bread because you're using it for specific sessions around high intensity and getting uh, quick forms of carbohydrates in, that's certainly fine. I tend to go for raisin bread. Uh, it's probably one of my vices. I eat a lot of raisin bread because it's sort of my go-to pre-workout snack. Um, it's delicious. The thick cut cafe style gives me, I think around 32 grams of carbs per slice. So it's pretty good for a red snack. Um, other things you may want to include is things like wheat or white tortillas. Now the things moving underneath that are more your non-perishables and these are your mainstays that are just going to sit in the kitchen. And again, depending on your preference around um you know, your cooking style and what you like, then these are obviously going to change. But for us, we like Asian style foods. Australians are often influenced by Southeast Asia. So I do cook a lot of Asian style um, meals with chilies, with fresh herbs, such as coriander. I don't think I had coriander on there, actually. So obviously, fresh herbs are important. Do I have coriander on there? Oh, yep, coriander in the bottom right. Um, and then things like your nuts and certainly things like cacao nibs, they're also going to be important, not just for your main meals like uh, lunches and dinners, but also for those overnight oats and cereals that you may be consuming. Um, 
rices, a selection of rice, wild rice, brown rice, white rice, depending on the purpose of why you're eating. Do you need fast carbs? Do you need slow carbs? Same for your pasta, same for noodles. As I mentioned, tin fish is really important just as a go-to grab, um, but also you know a super quick, very healthy, high protein, high quality fat meal, um, low carb, put on top of uh, vegetables, salad, fantastic meal when you need a red, a red meal or a red snack. Certainly your sauces, we have a lot of, again, as I said, Asian style sauces because stir fries are incredibly quick to make. Uh, Duka and Zatar is sort of a Middle Eastern spice mix. I would encourage anyone who has not bought Duka or Zatar to use it. Fantastic on salads, fantastic on eggs, um, really makes a difference to a plain sort of baby spinach or romaine lettuce or any of those types of leafy salads. It really adds a, a beautiful crunch and texture to that. Seeds are fantastic uh, and spices, dried spices for just really improving what would otherwise be a very plain basic salad. And then talking about uh, you know, salads, obviously in your fruit bowl, you can have your root vegetables and obviously your seasonable fruit. And then you're going into the, into the fridge again. So this is at the bottom of the fridge. And these are ten, tend to be the vegetables that we tend to eat on a very regular basis. And we tend to have these just marked off on the shopping cart. So when we do get home delivery or we pick up uh, from a local Woolworths, which is a supermarket chain, that we just get these delivered to us, we know exactly that we've got these amounts and then we can utilize these different products in differing ways, depending on what my fuel in plan says. Whether And what I tend to know is that majority of my week is either going to be yellow or red meals with a selection of uh, green meals sprinkled in based on you know the total duration intensity of some of those longer sessions over the weekend. So these are some habits and rituals that um, I'm not saying for everyone, but certainly uh, they're enjoyable. So these are these are some photos from home. So what I've encouraged or what certainly we did as a family in winter is we look at doing roast Sunday. So on, on every Sunday, we know that it's roast Sunday. And within that roast Sunday, we will do a selection of vegetables. So pan fried, uh, sorry, pan roasted root vegetables and greens. So from the higher glycemic index type vegetables, you would have potato, sweet potato, parsnips, beets. And that would go on one level. And that's usually just, I mean, in this case, this was Parmesan crusted potatoes, which was I think for Christmas, but you don't obviously have to do that. But certainly get those higher glycemic or moderate glycemic type root vegetables, which you can either eat on that night and certainly be saved for cold for later in the week. Then underneath that will be another tray of things like eggplant um, or aubergine, your green vegetables. So things like zucchini, broccolini and broccoli can also be oven roasted. And then underneath that, we would always do a meat sauce of a roast. So roast chicken up the top. Um, that was a lovely roast chicken we did. Uh, certainly roast lamb, uh, pork, depending on what your preference is, beef, you do that. The reason we do a roast on a Sunday is because preparation time is absolutely minimal in terms of probably five to 10 minutes. Cook time, depending on the cut, is going to be anywhere from an, you know 90 minutes up to you know six hours, depending if you're doing a slow roast. But what you have is a fantastic meal for the evening that the family can share. You then also have leftovers. So you'll have high quality protein that you can then divvy up. In the case of a chicken, I'd certainly recommend stripping the chicken down, putting it in Tupperware container. You also have a selection of moderate and high glycemic or high or moderate type carbohydrates that you can then apply to your meals over the next three or four days. And same for those lower uh, vegetables, the lower glycemic or the lower carb vegetables, such as, as I said, the aubergine, the broccoli, broccolini, you've got those as well. And so you can use those as a base salad and throw in things like baby spinach, arugula and whatnot into that and have a beautiful cold salad, easy to prepare just as a matter of taking out a few handfuls based on the portions you require and based on the color code that Fuelin has given you. Obviously the amount of protein is gonna be dependent on what we're telling you. Certainly probably for most athletes gonna be between 25 and 40 grams of protein, which is either gonna be roughly half a hand to a full hand of protein. 
So over the winter months for the Northern Hemisphere, what we suggest is doing something like a roast Sunday and then having those leftovers. For the Southern Hemisphere, which is coming into summer, what we've now transitioned into is, as you can see, Seafood Sunday. So instead of roast Sunday, it's now Seafood Sunday. And so every Sunday, we're now cooking a selection of seafood that we'll eat as a family on a Sunday and then have leftovers that we then use on the Monday night. And the reason I've got a pizza there is because every Monday night is Pizza Monday. And Pizza Monday is utilization of leftovers from either Seafood Sunday or Roast Sunday. So what we're building here is simple habits to allow you to eat very nutritious meals that allow you to follow your plan and allow you to easily execute because it's all about building the meals around what you need and then it's just portion control around the carb color and the amount of protein that you're being instructed to consume. So if you build in, and I'm not saying this is a system everyone uses, but I'd certainly encourage you to try it because it's a lot of fun. Certainly Pizza Sun, uh, sorry, Pizza Monday, if you've got young kids and they're happy to build it, or if you're a competitive person like myself and my partner, you tend to sort of each person every alternate week makes the, uh, makes the pizza and you tend to give each other scorings. And it's quite an enjoyable process. So protein is something that often comes up and uh, I know Joyce is on the call today and we were talking about protein yesterday and often missing it. So this is not about just protein powders being the only way to hit um, your protein amount. But I think what I'm often hearing is athletes are like, oh, how many protein shakes can I drink in a day in order to, or I need to drink two or three protein shakes to hit my protein amount. And I, I really sort of shy away from that I would say, look, one protein shake in its simplest form, i.e. one and a half to two scoops of protein in your shake, either with real milk or a nut milk or nut juice um, or water is sort of the way to drink a shake. If it's got extra carbohydrates, and I'll show you that later, maybe just eat the carbohydrates. If you don't have the option to blend in things like fruits, like berries and bananas and oats, maybe just eat those instead with the shake and you're going to find that's more satiating. So bottom left, obviously a protein shake is one way of getting your protein in. Top left, this is cereal, okay? And I know cereal is often frowned upon. People are like, oh, it's just full of sugar. Obviously, it depends on what type of cereal you eat. But you could take a good cereal, i.e. Weetabix or wheat bix as we like to call it, super high in fiber, slow digesting carbohydrate. And you can make that a high protein meal simply by mixing in protein milk. So get your vanilla whey or your chocolate, if you want to have chocolate wheat mix, mix that in and pour over the milk over that cereal. Yes, you could say it's like having another shake, but in this case, you're eating the cereal with fruit, with some nuts, seeds, whatever you want, and getting a high protein cereal. Do not waste your money on high protein cereals because the amount of protein that they put in there is not going to be significant enough for you to actually you know, hit your targets from a morning. So with a standard wheat bix, wheat bix per biscuit, I think will give you around six or seven grams of protein per biscuit. So if you have two biscuits, you put on uh, your protein milk over the top of that and maybe a bit of Greek yogurt, that meal suddenly becomes upwards of around 38 to 40 grams of protein. A very simple way to start the day with good quality uh, fruit. So lots of micronutrients, plenty of fiber coming from uh, the, the Weetabix, slow digesting carbohydrates combined with a fast digesting protein. Perfect. In the middle, we have overnight oats. Again, overnight oats, make it the night before, simple. Plenty of recipes within Fuel In if you just search overnight oats. You've got your fiber. You've got rolled oats. So again, depending on how you respond to oats, yes, there will be people who do get a slight bump in blood sugars. It's a normal response. Um, don't be too scared from it. Certainly you're using probably your overnight oats after training, which is an ideal time to actually have a, an increase in blood sugars and certainly an insulin response. Um, within this, you can put in half a scoop or a scoop of protein to add to the oats, which already have protein in. Greek yogurt, a low fat or a non-fat Greek yogurt, which doesn't have added sugars, again, is adding probably another five or six grams of protein into it. 
you've got your carbohydrates, you've got you know fat in a sauce, you might add one or two Brazil nuts, maybe some almonds, some chia seeds, add your fresh fruit in, your milk of choice, shake it up in the morning. You've got a high protein, good quality carbohydrate meal. The amount of oats is going to determine the amount of carbohydrates you have. So certainly if it's a red overnight oats that you're making, you're going to be using less than 40 grams of total weight of oats. If it's a yellow meal, you're probably aiming for somewhere like 60 to 70 grams of oats. And if it's a, a green meal, you're probably aiming upwards of sort of that 80 to 100 grams of dry weight oats. And that's another meal that you could use as a protein hack using a whey protein or a plant protein powder. Top right is simply yogurt. So whether you use, again, depending on your scenario, maybe you've got a very hard session coming up, you tolerate yogurt very well and you really enjoy it. If you want to use a, uh, a yogurt which has a higher carbohydrate amount and a higher sugar amount, that's not necessarily bad if the purpose is to fuel your next session. You could stir into that half a scoop or a scoop of whey protein, again, of your flavor choice because you've got multiples, and that suddenly boosts that pretty poor choice of yogurt, which may have only had you know somewhere between three and six grams of protein. Suddenly, it's 25 or 30 grams of protein in that yogurt depending on how much whey you put in or plant protein. You can top that with some fruit, some banana berries, add in a little bit extra carbohydrates and you've got a fantastic snack. And then down below, protein pancakes. Again, plenty of recipes in the Fuel In recipe, but you're taking a very high carbohydrate containing food option and adding in just by the addition of a whey protein scoop or a whey protein supplement or a plant protein supplement significantly changing the protein content of this otherwise high protein snack or meal. And again, doesn't if you've got a good quality protein supplement, the flavor and the texture of these um, pancakes or French toast and things like that is not going to be affected and it's still going to be a very enjoyable snack. So there's sort of five options, which maybe you haven't thought about of how to increase certainly your breakfast or your snack protein content. Barbecue or grill. So I wouldn't be Australian if I didn't talk about barbecue or grill. So these are all real photos. Um, so we tend to, I tend to use the grill a lot. Um, a, because I don't have to clean, you can probably see I haven't cleaned my barbecue very well on the left. Um, it is certainly cleaner than that now. But what we've got here is um, simply a whole snapper. And I did another one on the weekend, a whole snapper. Uh, whole fish is honestly the easiest thing to cook. As long as your barbecue is super hot, um, slice the skin as I've shown there, put some olive oil over it, salt, chuck it on the grill. Um, after about you know 10 minutes, you sort of just test it, make sure depending on the size of the fish, flip it and then cook the other side. If you want to use a thermometer, use that. And it is absolutely delicious and it will be you know absolutely perfect fish. And you can see in that bottom right-hand corner, uh, we had the whole snapper and we had the octopus and some um, steamed broccolini. Now, the octopus, a lot of people freak out about octopus and they sort of think, oh, God, I couldn't eat that. And I'm sorry if you've seen my octopus pet, I think, or my octopus teacher, whatever that doco was. But octopus is absolutely delicious. It's high protein. It's packed full of magnesium. It's packed full of selenium. And it's got a lot of iron in it. So for those into and B12. So it's probably one of the best sources of B12 that you can get. Um, for a lot of people, they're scared about it because they don't know how to cook it. So the easiest way to cook uh, octopus, and this is a very large octopus, as you can see, is actually to boil it. And it sort of you know, defies logic. You sort of think, oh, if I boil something too long, it's gonna become rubbery. Well, actually with octopus, you need to boil it for about 40 minutes. You know when it's ready, when you can put a skewer through it and it goes through like hot butter. I would encourage everyone over this next period coming into December, either over Christmas, cook some octopus for Christmas, obviously have a practice run beforehand. Um, baby octopus, medium octopus or very large tentacles, you can simply grill. If you boil it, after boiling it, dissemble it, whatever you want to do, put it in iced water to chill it down. You can pop it in the freezer just to cool it or chill it. Once it's ready, once your barbecue is super hot, um, you can put a little bit of olive oil over the legs, chuck it on the barbecue, 
grill it, char it a little bit, and it is absolutely delicious. And as I said, very, very high protein, great source of micronutrients. Above sardines, again, wouldn't be my talk without talking about small oily fish, but sardines on the barbecue, fresh sardines, probably nothing better. Absolutely love them. Uh, photo on the top right, again, super simple. This is last night's dinner. Uh, it was just utilizing what was in the fridge. So go back to the slide one, have chicken thighs already in the fridge, simply cut them up into cubes, thread them onto metal skewers. Uh, I had one piece of um, onion in between every two bits of meat. These were marinated in simple honey and soy with some sesame seeds for about 10 minutes beforehand. They come off the barbecue. They look like they've been prepared by someone who's a much better cook than myself. And they're absolutely delicious. Your partner will be impressed. You'll be impressed. High protein content, low fat in this case, because it was all trimmed, having it with a green salad. The green salad was all I had left in the fridge, which was um, cucumbers. So I cut up three whole cucumbers, some shredded lettuce, some uh, half a chopped up avocado cut, chop, chopped into chunks with a very simple Dijon mustard, uh, lemon juice, olive oil dressing. Super simple, um, but very delicious. And it, of course, was a red meal for me. Underneath, again, focusing on seafood. If you have access to seafood and you can get seafood, I would certainly recommend eating seafood on a regular basis, ideally once a day. Um, but if you can't eat it once a day, then certainly trying to get it in two or three times a week. Um, mixed sources, things like oysters, very good for zinc, uh, your B vitamins, we've talked about octopus before. And then we have some salmon sashimi, uh, again, omega-3 fatty acids, not as good as things like sardines or herring, but certainly very delicious. And then underneath that is some kingfish. And if anyone's ever had kingfish sashimi, very cheap if you go to the fish markets, um, that 150 grams, I think was only about $12. So if you are prepared to put in the effort, you can certainly turn you know, a simple barbecue into a gourmet delight. So you're all very familiar with the carb color con uh, the carb color concept that we run, but I want to just review what we've put on social media previously and just really highlight the simplicity of the program of Fuel In and so you all understand how it works. So we put this up. This is breakfast, okay? And so the rings signify the different carb color or the content. Red being a lower amount of carbs, so 30 grams. Yellow being around that 50 gram mark and green being that higher carb amount of 100. So the central to this is obviously the mainstay for these um, overnight oats, which is your oats, your milk of choice, and your protein of choice. And then depending on what you add to those, really just builds out what carb color you're going to have. So in the case of red, you're adding you know, low-fat Greek yogurt, some flax, which is mainly going to be some fat and a little bit of protein, and berries, which are very low glycemic index, low carbohydrate. As we push into the to the uh, the middle one, it's going to be increasing the amounts of the berries, adding in a little bit more flax, but certainly adding in the chia seed to bump up the total amount of carbohydrate, and certainly increasing the amount of oats, the portion of oats that is in within that uh, yellow overnight protein oats. And then as we go into the right, you can obviously see small additions of highly dense carbohydrate-containing products, so something like maple syrup is going to instantly increase the amount of carbohydrates within that meal. So 15, a tablespoon of maple syrup is going to give you roughly 15 grams of carbs. Two tablespoons, 30 grams, okay? That's going to have a lot of carbohydrates combined with the oats, uh, with the dark, dark chocolate chips and the cherries, you've suddenly got upwards of sort of 75, 80 grams of carbs in that simple meal. Same meal base, different carb colors. You control the protein by obviously controlling the amount of protein supplement you put in and obviously the amount of oats you put in. And depending on what type of milk, that is going to impact the amount of protein. Once you learn this and once you build your meals and you get comfortable with understanding what is in those meals, then it becomes a regular habit and you can hit this every single day. As I said, change the flavor of the protein. Suddenly you've got coconut flavored oats, you've got chocolate, you've got banana honey, or you've got vanilla but you have these varying textures or different other flavor combinations to rely on. 
we go into breakfast. So again, different, same concept. So we've got eggs and we've got oil. Now, if you're a plant-based athlete, those eggs could be substituted out for something like tofu. So in that case, oh, well, we've even got, you know, if you don't want to, if you're an ovo-lacto-vegetarian, certainly you keep the eggs in. If you're a vegan, then you would have to substitute out the eggs and increase the amount of vegetarian mince or tofu, have a combination of both. For the red meal, still including a piece of toast. A piece of toast, depending on the type of toast, is only going to have around 15 grams of carbs. Toast is not your enemy. It is a useful product, especially whole wheat toast, to increase fiber intake. Good quality toast is not going to do you any disservice. Tailor that with, again, some large handfuls of baby spinach, arugula. You've got, you know, and you could substitute out the vegetarian mints for real mints, uh, lamb mints or uh, beef mints, depending on, or pork mints, depending on what your uh, dietary preference is. As you go into the yellow, you can see we're just layering up. We're just increasing the amount of toast and we're increasing the amount of vegetables to bump up that total carbohydrate content. And then when we go into the green, again, you may say that's an unhealthy meal, but it's probably with a purpose. It's either refueling or it's pre-fueling a very long, hard session. And again, you're using things like eggs and protein powders to increase that protein content combined with some milk. And then obviously things like your, your flour of choice and your maple syrup is going to bump up the carb content. We go into lunches and dinner. Now this could obviously be lunch or dinner. Um, same concept. The base is things like your sweet potatoes. Okay, so stuff, stuff sweet potatoes is the actual meal. So we've got sweet potatoes in the middle with some olive oil and seasoning. And then we're just making a different dinner from that. So the red meal is an egg scramble with sweet potato. The burger with mash, okay. Higher amounts of sweet potato, larger portion is going to bring that up to around 50 grams of carbs. And then certainly for the green, you're probably eating double the amount of sweet potato, adding in extras, like I said, with the beans, whether it's black beans or green, uh, red kidney beans or gabanzo even, you could be adding that in. And that's certainly going to be bumping up that carbohydrate content. Be mindful of the protein with this. You may, depending on if you are going to stuff sweet potatoes, you may want to include, depending on your dietary preference, including something like tofu, or a chicken breast, or a piece of sirloin steak, or a nice piece of fish. Some other options, talking about fish. Again, the basis is a white fish. Um, depending on your fat intake, you may use an oily piece of fish, like uh, salmon or uh, bonito. Or if you're on a lower fat diet, or a lower caloric diet, or nutrition plan, I should say, not diet, uh, then you might use something like... Um, a sea bass or a branzino or anything like that. You've got your salad, your fish and your olive oil and seasoning. And then depending on the total carb amount, you're just layering up. So things like a cucumber salad, like I highlighted before, or having the cucumber salad combined with rice or going into larger amounts of potentially rice and quinoa just to boost up the total carb content. So again, just layering that carbohydrate containing products to go from a lower amount to a moderate amount to a high amount without changing or having to think about creating a whole new meal. Same for snacks. Go-to snack, honestly, before a session, first thing in the morning or in the afternoon, it's a piece of toast. Whether you want to use a piece of toast, whether it's whole wheat, whether it's white, whether it's raisin toast, whether it's a tortilla, up to you. You're about to do some exercise. It's going to be fine, okay? Again, depending on the carb content is going to be the amounts of toast or tortillas or whatever form of bread that you're going to be using. And then layering on, on top of that, whether it's jelly jam, whether it's honey, whether it's almond butter, whether it's a combination of all of them, those amounts and the portions is going to dictate whether it's a red, yellow or a green meal. And finally, we touched on shakes before. Look, for me, a protein shake is a means to an end. It's not a, a, a culinary delight, even though I think true protein is very tasty. Um, I will tend to just mix in a shaker protein, creatine, and milk of choice. If I see it's a red meal, I'll tend to eat a banana with that or a couple of handfuls of blueberries. If I see it's a yellow meal, I might eat two bananas or an apple and a banana and get my two pieces of fruit in with that to get my total carbohydrate amount. If it's a green 
shake, which to be honest, I never really do. Um, yes, I would potentially blend in some oats into that and maybe some some fruit such as a large banana and then add in something like this, which is actually delicious, adding in the mango SOS into that. And it's a very delicious meal. So depending on what your appetite, excuse the pun, but if you like making shakes and you're happy to blend them up, go for your life. If you like to keep it simple and just have the protein powder and then mix in your liquid with your creatine and drink that and then eat your food, certainly go for that as well. Whatever floats your boat. I thought this was a good quote because I think everyone uh, at the moment, like, you know, everyone is talking about their problems in life and stresses and things like that. But I thought, you know, everything sort of boils down to, and certainly everything gets put in perspective after a really good workout and a good night's sleep. So, you know, no matter how much you're struggling with nutrition or you're struggling with life in general, or your training, like if you fall back on the basics and you go, you know what, I'm just going to get my session done, going to get a good night's sleep. More often than not, you wake up the next day and things are a little bit better. So, Questions? Cool. Um, any questions? I'm sorry for the person on the, the phone who uh, probably didn't get to see the slides or the pictures, but hopefully the information I uh, portrayed uh, came through. Do you guys have any questions? Mike? Have any questions, Ed? That makes sense. All sense, pretty good. Yeah, uh, I am. On, oh, yeah. I am on the phone. Thank you so very much. Uh, here, here, here's um, my my thought, and in regards to you know what you've shared, very helpful, appreciated. What advice? What resources do you have, or could you point us to? Uh, should we travel for work? Uh, I'm on the road about 100 days a year, and and so sometimes the process and discipline uh, mm -hmm. become challenged. How, how do you advise folks in that type of scenario? Yeah, look, I, I mean, this is probably the reason we created Fuel In in the way we did without a specific meal plan. Like, we're not prescriptive in terms of, right, you're eating chicken on a Monday night or you're eating fish on this because – as you pointed out, what was your name? Sorry. Yes. William. William. So, Will, um, the exact reason is like, we have a lot of busy, you know, you look at the triathlete persona, a lot of you are business men or business women and working people who have to travel and they have to experience life. And the reality is you're going to have to eat out at a restaurant for a lunch or a dinner or grab some food. And so the system Effectively, yes, you make better choices. Instead of going to McDonald's, maybe you go to a good quality restaurant wherever you're eating. Um, but you could you could look at that menu in advance. You could say, okay, what have I got in fuel in? Okay, I've got a red meal for dinner. You understand how much protein you need. So you think, okay, you know, I don't know how big you are, but maybe you're saying, okay, I need 40 grams of protein. What does that mean? It's roughly a 200 gram or a seven, seven ounce steak, seven ounce piece of chicken. Is there anything on the menu that resembles that? Yeah, there's some chicken. Most most places will either have a steak, chicken breast, or a piece of fish. So you order that. If it's got a heap of creamy white sauce on it, you say, look, put that on the side. Is What's it served with? Is it served with mash? Is it served with potatoes? Is it served with steamed greens? Do you have an option? Now, depending on if you're a green, a yellow, uh, sorry, green, yellow, or red meal, that's going to dictate what you choose. So if it's green, you're like, bring me the potatoes with an extra side of potatoes and maybe some bread. If it's yellow, you know, yeah, I'll have some potatoes, but can I have some seasonal greens with that? And then if it's a red meal, hey, can I not have any bread on the table today? And can you hold the potatoes, but can I have an extra serve of a leafy green salad with, you know, steamed greens? And that mm -hmm. will fit your meal at that point in time. And that that's the whole point. Like I can tell you now, like we've got some very – you know, busy executives who run big companies. And for them, it's reducing that decision paralysis because all they do is go, you know, some of them have the luxury of having EAs and PAs and whatnot, but they can just say, hey, I need a red lunch. And that's ordered for them. The person knows how much to order. Now, if you don't have the luxury of having an EA or a PA, you can still look at that menu and go, you could call up, 
you know, if you're in America, sweet green or any of these other places and go, yep, I need this, this, and this. And that will fit your meal as best it can given the circumstances. Does that help, Will? That's helpful. Thank you. Yes, it does. Cool. We do we do have some um some books which are based around fast food. We never really use them, but we can certainly if you send me an email, we can send them to you and it sort of breaks down some of the better choices around, you know, when you're you're stuck and you're you know, you've got to go to Five Guys or um, In-N-Out Burger or something like that, which I know is always on the road and always tempting. At least there's some sort of guidance around what you might want to choose over some of the other things. So That would be helpful. I will send, send you that email. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Not, not, in, not you. encouraging you to eat that, but I know what it's like when you're traveling a lot and uh, you're driving on the road. So, Much um, appreciated. Cool. cool. Uh, Ed, did you have any questions? All good? And Mike, you are all good? Yeah, I'm good. Are you, uh, are you coming to the Tour Down Under this year? What's that? Are you coming to the Tour Down Under this well, year? Well, I was there last year, actually. I need to speak to Pillar and see if they're going down again. I um, Yeah, I should talk to them. When, when is, what are the dates again? Uh, mid, mid, back end of January. Yeah. Just before I try you're, you're riding in it? Uh, yeah, I live in Adelaide, so I just go and get involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was good last year. It was really good fun. So yeah, no, it's a it's a good point actually. Um, how does your fridge look? Very similar to yours, but I just let my wife organize it. <laughs> it's it's nice to have someone organize, that's for sure. And then so, the meal planning and like use Woolworths, obviously, but I I found that really helpful as well. Um, so I just do the direct to boot. So use the app, plan the meals, and then do the shopping on the website to collect. And that way it's a bit easier to just work through it systematically. Um, also, I, I think online delivery, honestly, like if online delivery is something everyone has access to, it is A, it, it really does simplify, like you're just systematic. Okay, I need this much for this much for this much, but it also stops you buying a heap of crap in the supermarket. That's probably, I always walk past the chips aisle and I'm like, oh yeah. You know, the chili, the chili kettle chips will go in the bag, the blocks of chocolate. I'm terrible. Like, but if I don't go near it, again, it's the environment. If it's much easier to avoid than resist. And I'll say that over and over again. Like so much easier. If I don't have the stuff in my fridge or in my pantry, I don't eat it. It's simple as that. I don't tend to make the effort to go to the, you know, the seven eleven or whatever to go and get a packet of crisps. So that is something. I think I think using online shopping is an absolute must too. You can build out a repetitive shopping list, yeah, which is even better. So you just look at it, it's quick, and then you just edit based on what you actually need for the week and you adjust based on what you've got in your pantry and things like that. So I'd certainly go for that. Um, Joyce, obviously we spoke a few things about this yesterday. Did that sort of clarify what we talked about and really, you know, in terms of some of those protein options, maybe trialing some of those? You're just on mute. Yeah, that did. Um, especially when you said pizza bases and stuff like that. Well, yeah, we have a pizza night usually, so that, that and that, helped a lot. Those, those high protein, low carb, um, you know, bases from was from Woolworths. I think yeah. Coles do them as well. They're actually really good. And the one we now get is a sourdough base, so it has yes, to be kept yeah. in the fridge. The older ones. Uh, we were using, and then I looked at the ingredients and the actual ingredients weren't that great. There was sort of vegetable oils and whatnot. And that's always something, look, if you can make your pizza base, great. Again, I think it's like, yeah, whatever your appetite is for, you know, convenience and that. And I, and I did say this to my partner the other day is like, yeah, let's, let's have a go at making some pizza dough. It's actually not that hard and it's quite fun, but it is certainly more effort than pulling out a, a fresh sourdough um, pizza base from the, from the fridge. So maybe exactly. something for Christmas that we'll play around with. <laughs> yeah. No, um, everything makes sense. Cool. Ed, do you do anything like roast Sunday or anything like that where you, you cook leftovers on a Sunday for the, the remaining week? No, I, I, I don't, but uh, we, we tend to keep a very simple um, cyclical routine 
Monday through uh, through Friday anyway. It seems the same like for the Mondays. Um, like breakfast is the same for myself and my wife has her own um, breakfast that she sets up. But uh, lunchtime is always like fish and rice with peas on uh, on Mondays. Tuesdays is pasta Tuesdays. So I make concoct my own Italian pasta from my time in Italy. And then Wednesdays is uh, protein like steak you know, or some form of lean meat, lean cut of meat. Thursday tends to be more of a vegan uh, day. My 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 wife, my wife is vegan, and then uh, Fridays tends to be like curry chicken or something like that for my military days. And the weekends, because we have different training schedules, then uh, it's basically your own <laughs> you're on your own for for lunch. But what I find interesting is that by keeping a very simple a cyclical routine the same thing week to week and just as you said you kind of you can upgrade it downgrade it modify it can amplify it depending on, on the week um to add a bit more variety to it but i find it, it seems to work very very well and keeps the uh the gastrointestinal system very steady because it's, it's used to what it's getting it fuels the workouts appropriately um and it just seems to, it just makes it easier to keep the consistency and then for eat, in the evenings we tend to eat most of our vegetables then like mostly greens um, and, and just beef up a salad and just change the proteins from beans to um, tofu to wh- whatever type of uh, vegetarian or, or uh, I say uh, vegan protein. And I'm, I'm pretty flexible on that. I, I'm not a vegan per se, but once in a while I find that the variety is, uh, is quite helpful and quite tasty actually. But uh, just the ability to take, take the base as a salad, use apple cider vinegar, olive oil as a main staple, and then put seeds on it, nuts, um, tempe, as I said, beans, tofu, or even better, like leftover chicken or fish uh, to add it on. Or sometimes I boil um, eggs ahead of time, like a rack of 12 eggs, put them in the fridge. And then they're just like a, a quick go-to in the morning, uh, post-workout, or even in the evenings, if I haven't had any real meat protein, and I just feel that urge. I just need that extra hemi iron or something you know, that I just you know throw that on. Yeah, I think, look, and what you're describing is, is really nice because I think so many athletes and people get confused in that they feel like they've got to make something new every day and it's got to be this culinary delight. And it's like, no, just eat really good food, but eat it consistently and just find what works for you. And as I said, like those meals can be scaled up or scaled down depending on what your training volume and intensity is. And all you need to do, you go, okay, I know how much protein I need to eat in each of these meals. And then all you're doing is scaling the carbohydrate amount based on the color you see. And that's the simplicity of it. Like, you know, as Alan highlighted last week, and I would encourage everyone to watch Alan's, you know, Q&A, because there is going to be measurement error. Like as best you think you're measuring everything right, even the errors on the barcode, even if you're scanning everything, there's still measurement error. So it's about having a system that you do consistently. And if you do that consistently and it's pretty close, you're going to see positive results, whether that be in general health from health markers, whether it be bloods, whether it be, um, you know, other areas of subjective well-being, like your mood, your energy, your sleep quality or performance markers, whether that is, you know, being stronger, more powerful, being able to push more on the bike or fast on the run. Like if you do things consistently, over time and those things that you're doing consistently are good you will see results um and i think it's you know i I just think everyone is just a lot of people think it's complicated but it doesn't have to be as long as you've got the environment set up which it sounds like you do it sounds like joyce like mike does um i know lara does like the environment's there you just grab all you're doing is grabbing the things that you need at that time. You're not rushing around like a headless chicken. You know, it's just, it's simple. So yeah, no, I commend you for what you're doing. It's great. Um, right, guys, well, we're probably up on time. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, if you've got any questions, certainly feel free to reach out to me, um, scott at fuelin.com. For anyone else who's watching this, uh, if you've got any questions or you're interested in what we do with Fuel In, certainly the system works. Um, yeah. I think we've got close to a thousand athletes on monthly now, uh, which is really cool to see and some pretty outstanding results uh, from athletes all around the world. So thank you for being part of this and thank you for listening. And uh, until then, great. We'll catch Thanks, you Scott. Appreciate it. It's awesome. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.